we're going to go ahead and then uh, move to public hearing. Um, City Clerk. Item 6A, hold a public hearing, waive the first reading, and introduce an ordinance enacting 1.62% rate increase for Recology San Bruno Garbage and Recycling Service to be effective July 1st, 2020. And we'll turn it over to our Finance Director, uh, Keith DiMartini. Okay, good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. First, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, excellent, thank you. All right, the objective for this presentation is to receive an overview of the of Recology's rate application for fiscal year 2020-2021 and to waive the first reading and introduce an ordinance enacting a 1.6% increase for Recology effective July 1st of 2020. And just to confirm that with the city clerk, are, is this is the slide deck going? I don't see it. I just want to make sure that it's going along. Not at this one moment. moment. I didn't have it up. Just one moment. Okay, Keith. Okay, great, thank you. If you can go to slide three, please. Um, we'll move on to the agenda for the presentation on slide three. First, talk about the rate adjustment for fiscal year 2021. We'll talk about the specific rate changes for residential and commercial, and commercial toter sizes. I will also provide an overview of the protest period um, that has recently been concluded and a timeline to implement the new rates. We'll also talk about the public notice that was, that was sent out uh, via mail to all uh, residential and commercial um, uh, garbage uh, customers. Talk about the timeline and the request to the city council. Uh, and then um, Kirsten Pinocchi from Recology San Bruno will provide a brief overview presentation as well to conclude this presentation. So moving on to the next slide, the proposed rate adjustment for fiscal year 2021 will be a rate increase of 1.62% um, across all of, of the uh, total sizes. The new rate will take, effect, will take effect on July 1st. And as presented about a month and a half ago to City Council for the initial uh, presentation, the rates for um, the non uh, sort of robust uh, rate application review year is primarily based on a consumer price, price index inflationary assumption, um, which uh, has the rates only going up by, again, by 1.6%, not a very significant increase year over year. So on to the next slide. This table here shows what the current rates are for the four most popular um, residential toter sizes, um, and then comparing that to what the proposed rate will be for each of those four sizes as well, and what the uh, dollar amount increase will be. So a majority of residential customers in San Bruno have a 32-gallon toter uh, currently. They're paying $31.42 uh, per month. That rate is going up by just over 50 cents, 51 cents to $31.93. You can also see for our commercial customers what their rate increases are uh, projected to be as well for the various sizes available to the commercial customers. So moving on to the next slide, as we mentioned at the prior uh, city council presentation, there was we uh, initiated the public notice process uh, with council's uh, approval last meeting notices were subsequently mailed to all residential and commercial um, customers on later in March, on March 27th. Uh, this notice included information about the public hearing process, what the protest period um, was, the approval process by city council, information about the rate adjustment from Recology, and what those proposed increases are, are meant to achieve. Uh, and also uh, it allowed um, it allowed customers to submit a protest if, if they wanted to protest the rate increase. And as of uh, this afternoon, the city has received 31 uh, protests from, from members of the public, which is far below um, the required threshold for the Proposition 218 requirement. So moving on to the next slide. 
the city council had already directed staff at the March 10th meeting to initiate the 45 day noticing process. Um, notices were mailed late in March. Today, our, we are before council with the first public hearing um, requesting the introduction of the new rate ordinance. Um, and it will conclude the 45 day protest period as of today. Staff will come back to the city council at the next city council meeting on May 26th, where we will conduct the second reading uh, and request council to, to adopt the new rates at that time. And again, the new rates will take effect on July 1st, which is the beginning of our next fiscal year. So with that, the next slide, staff's request to council is to waive the first reading and introduce the ordinance, enacting a 1.62% rate increase for Ecology San Bruno uh, garbage and recycling service to be effective on July 1st. And before we turn it over to the council for any questions or comments you may have, I'd like to first ask the general manager at Recology San Bruno, Ms. Kirsten Pinocchi, um, to make a short presentation. Thank you, Keith. Um, if you could go to the next slide, Melissa, and then the next one. So thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to come in and jump on and speak a little bit. Um, this has been, to say the least, an interesting time for Recology. We've been trying, as you all have been as well, to maneuver through these uncertain times without a playbook. I'm really happy to say that our team at Recology San Bruno and the way they've adapted to this continued changes with positive attitudes. The drivers have been consistently reporting to work, again, positive attitudes. Our customer service team as well um, has been thrown changes and curves around every corner and they've, and they've adapted to them well. I don't believe we've had high, um, high hold times. We've been there for our residents and been able to answer their calls as they come in. In regards to changes that have occurred, with the suspension of some of the commercial businesses and the closure of schools, we were able to reroute those drivers to assist our residential drivers in order to get them in and out of the neighborhoods as quickly as possible. The city and Recology jointly decided that it was in the best interest of our community to postpone the compost giveaway that was scheduled on Earth Day weekend in April. But we will, rest assured, will work with the city of San Bruno on a new date for that. In an effort to keep our employee owners and the community safe, Recology worked with the city of San Bruno on a modified bulky item pickup program. We wanted to do a modified program to allow the residents who had to get rid of washers and dryers and refrigerators and large items to be able to still do so. So we did those on specific days. And let me say that our residents in the city were so understanding, um, they worked they spoke with our customer service reps and really understood it was about the safety of both the public and our employee owners. However, I am happy to report that as of last Monday, May 4th, we have, a, um, excuse me, we have resumed our regular bulky item pickup program. So Recology did reach out to all the residents that had called during our postponement period and all those customers are now being serviced their bulky item pickup. Our household hazardous waste drop off was also temporarily closed to the public for safety and that too has now been reopened. We do require the public and our employee owners to join appropriate PPE when bringing household hazardous waste to the transfer station for proper disposal. So those are the changes and the things that have been going on at Recology San Bruno during this time. Thank you. Keith, are we back to you? Yes, Mr. Mayor, that concludes uh, staff's presentation. So we'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay, this is a thank you very much to both. Uh, this is a public hearing. So we're going to go ahead and I'd like to uh, see if we have members of the public that would like to address this topic. Uh, uh, yes, we do have some hand, hands raised. Okay, uh, why don't we go ahead and hear from those folks first, please. Okay, we'll start with uh, Tim. Just one moment, I'm bringing you into the room. One second, we're trying to unmute him. Hi, Tim, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. You can go ahead. So, um, on this topic, I would like to um, 
mentioned that I'm protesting against the recology uh, increase. Um, I believe it's not a good time considering the um, epidemic, the pandemic that's going on now. And, um, you know, some people are out of work and, and could use that money um, to, with their family's uh, needs. So um, I would like this not to be uh, vote no on this. Hopefully the council will do that and consider uh, what's going on in the world and in our community at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. And, and Raina, my wife would like to talk on it too, as well. Okay. Um, I know Mr. S uh, yes, since we're, since we're there and you take a short time, why don't we ask for Raina to, to go ahead if she's available? You know, if there are other people, I'd rather uh, leave the time for the for other people to speak but I also protesting to the increase. I mean, because, you know, a lot of people are having so much difficult time putting food on their table, let alone, and now at this time, it put in an increase, uh, yet how to stay afloat in San Bruno, I think it is not appropriate. So I protest, and hopefully, City Council will take that 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 will make that decision because it's not the right time to bring this issue or the increase at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Raina. Okay, one moment. Um, okay, the next person is uh, Stephen Seymour. Just one moment, Stephen or Sandra. I'm not sure. I'm bringing you in now. Hi, Stephen or Sandra, can you Hi. hear me? It's Sandra Perez Vargas. Um, Go ahead. Good presentation, Kirsten. I, I want to preface my comments by saying that I love Recology. I think they're an amazing company. Uh, I have friends who currently work there, have worked and retired from there. It's one big family and they provide an amazing service for our city. That being said, um, although you are asking for a very very reasonable rate increase, even minuscule, I would say. I just think the optics of it might be bad for your company because when other companies are giving, you know, breaks like not turning off the lights or other breaks um, and with so many people really on the edge, I don't think it's the amount you're asking and that it's not a valid request. I just think it's the timing because it could be just like just the last straw emotionally for someone. Um, so I would just ask that you consider that, maybe postpone by six months if that seems reasonable okay. to you, uh, 90, say whatever um, you think is very reasonable, but I just really, really think it's worth considering because I think you should hold on to that reputation as a wonderful company to work for and to be served by. Thank you. Thanks, Sandra. Do we have any other um, speakers, City Clerk? Um, yes, we have one more, just one moment. Amulin Rosmus, just one moment. I'm bringing you into the room now. Can you hear can me? Can you hear us? Oh, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, wonderful. I would like to also, I think, just piggyback on what Sandra said. And I think, although the rate is extremely low, um, I think the time is not right. Um, although, although those rates are low, as you all mentioned, and she did as well, I think postponement um, is the best for all of us. Um, and because those, that increase seems so low, it seems as if the city, it, it seems as if the company is not going to go into bankruptcy because it doesn't get that low increase. And so I think postponing it uh, is the best way to deal with that low increase. And when we all as a community are starting to work um, and have a more regular um, income stream, uh, we can, I think, better support recology and also support one another. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, I believe that is it. I don't see any other hands raised. I, I do see one, maybe it's uh, from Mr. Oh, Mr. Seymour. Mr. Seymour. I don't know for a fact, but maybe. One moment. Sorry, it wasn't me, I'm not sure, but I have nothing to say, sorry. Okay, no problem, thank you. Just wanted to make sure. 
Thank you. All right, I'm seeing no other uh, hands up at this time. Um, so this is a public hearing, and so therefore, if there are no other members from the public, and uh, City Clerk can take one last check, uh, we're going to ask. For, I'm going to ask for a motion and second uh, to go ahead and close the public hearing. So moved. There are, there are no hands raised, by the way. Thank you. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Salazar Davis to close public hearing. Uh, do we need to do a roll call, uh, City Clerk? I think we should just just because. Okay. Please do. Council Member Davis. Aye. Council Member Mason. Yeah, just to close the public hearing. Right? Just to close the public hearing, yes. Yes. Council Member Medina. Aye. Vice Mayor Salazar. Aye. Mayor Medina. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. So now we're going to go ahead and bring it back to the City Council for questions and or comments. And so... Um, I know it takes a minute to get the hands up. So um, anybody from the council uh, wish to ask questions or comments? I'm not seeing any hands up. It looks like Linda's eager to jump in. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Linda, <didn't hear. laughs> it's OK. Um, I just Linda. wanted to ask, the, the, can you hear me, everybody? Perfect. OK, great. Um, I just wanted to ask the um, representative from Recology of, about the smaller totes. Um, we we had talked about this at the last meeting, and I was just wondering if that was going to be a viable option. Hi. Okay, so we did look into, I believe you were requesting information about the 16-gallon cart. So I did um, report back to city staff and let them know that in essence, going down to a 16 gallon cart, Council Member Mason could actually increase the rate for a resident. And I'll explain why. The 20 gallon that we, our customers have now is an actual insert. That insert comes at a cost of $23. There is no insert to make a cart of 16. So we would essentially have to go to a different cart, which is $50. There's also the increased risk of contamination. Um, as we already have seen with some customers with the 20 gallon cart, the contamination has increased because they're using, because they don't have enough room in their 20 gallon, they're then putting the extra garbage into their recycling carts and then contaminating their recycling. The other um, piece of that puzzle is that the cost of organic processing and the cost of now, you know, that recycling is actually, there's a cost of processing the recycling, those costs, are continually going up. So in order for someone to migrate to the 16 gallon, they would have, if there was one, they would have to actually pull guard, pull things out of their current cart and put it into the organics cart and the recycling cart in order to be able to utilize a 16. So those costs are continually going up. So quite honestly, I don't see that there would be a cost savings in moving to a, a cart that is only four gallons in difference. Um, it might actually cost more. So the, the, the fifty dollars. Thank you for that. Um, the fifty dollars would be whose cost? It would be a cost on on Recology because we buy the carts, but then it would ultimately come back to the rate payers during a detailed rate year because there's an increased costs that Recology would incur. Okay, and so so you do you have an estimate of what that would cost the. A resident who would choose to go down to the 16 gallon? Um, no, but I could probably tell you that I think that, well, no, I couldn't give you a cost estimate because that would be, we'd have to do a, um, like a pro forma, like we do when we did the organics. So, okay. I just, I mean, I, th I looked at what it costs in other cities and it is, um, it is cheaper than what we have here. And, uh, I don't think that's enough for my household, but maybe for some seniors on fixed income or, you know, singles or maybe people just that don't have as much garbage. Um, if it's if I'm basing it on the numbers I'm seeing in other cities, it, it would be a, a cost difference of about, I think it was five to seven dollars. So if, if we could get that cost, that would be helpful. But before we approve um or actually just review the Recology contract. That would be great. Okay. 
Okay. He just went on mute. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. We'll take a look. I'll, I'll work with the city manager and, and finance director on getting that information okay. for you. To, okay. to you so general much. manager, when you say the 16 gallon insert, are you talking about a new garbage can or a just a different insert? If it was the 16 gallon, it would have to be an all, a completely new part. There Meaning, is, or as, as we may call it, a garbage can, but I know it's a, or a trash receptacle. Um, okay, so then that's where the $50 comes because you would need new receptacles. Correct. Okay. So it's not just, you can't just put the insert, you've got to have a new can. Okay, and are the trucks equipped for that? A, uh, if it was a different mm -hmm. receptacle? Yes, they're all, they all, we use a semi-automated process, so we would be able to hook the, the newer cart, that new cart onto the same tippers that we have currently. Thank you. And I'm sorry, Linda, I jumped in. I apologize. No, no, you're fine. And then I, I sent a, a number of questions in um, to the city, but I just sent them this morning without the expectation that they'd be answered by now. So hopefully we'll get those answered by the time it comes back to us. So that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Anybody else from the city council? Uh, Marty. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I know. I know this is um, this is tiring for for a number of our residents that each year we're coming back, and by the contract that we have with Recology, this is the process. We, um, especially now, um, these increases are very modest, yet they still do add up. Um, so my question is, if we postpone this increase, and in the detailed year, Recology would be able to make up the difference, our rate increase will be much higher in the following year. Um, I just wanted to, to, to pass that on to Kirsten and find out if if they have thought of postponing this increase. Kirsten? Yes, so I did speak with, you know, our controller prior to this because that is a common question that, that I would expect. Um, his answers to that were obviously delaying the rate increase would result in a larger increase in the future. Um, so understand that. The also, there's a piece of that that um, this rate increase is part of the franchise agreement. And mm -hmm. delaying an increase would be outside the language of the franchise agreement and would require negotiation of the new terms. So it's not as simple as saying, sure, let's, we'll, we'll delay for you. There is uh, some other factors involved. Um, again, we will work with residents who are currently still in the 32 gallon and can definitely work with them to see if they can qualify and can utilize the 20 in order to take some of this pressure off of our residents as we do every rate increase. So I would encourage residents to definitely give our office a call to see if that's something we can do for them. Um, I'll, I'll wait to hear what my colleagues have to say and then I'll have a question for our city attorney. To the chair. Uh, Laura. Hi, hey, Kirsten. Um, I, I would assume like every other utility company that's out there, um, residents who have lost their jobs, they're on a fixed income, struggling to pay their bill. Um, I would think that the, the increase isn't going to make or break that situation. But in, in, in paying their bill in its entirety is going to be a challenge. So are you working with them? Are you giving them um, payment plans? What's, what's the process that you offer at Recology? Um, Council Member Davis, our billing is done through the city of San Bruno, so the, the finance department would definitely have to answer to that and um, how they're creating payment plans for the customers. I forgot I pay automatically. I don't even pay attention anymore to my bill. <laughs> but I guess to the city it would be the same thing, right? So a resident can call in to the city and it's a garbage bill that we pay bi-monthly, right? Now that I'm thinking about it, we pay every two months. So can, an, can a resident communicate to the city to delay bill payment? Councilmember Davis, this is, this is Keith, if I may, through the chair. 
Um, yes, the city does offer a low income assistance program for uh, residents that, that do qualify for such assistance. Uh, our, the application for that program is on the city's website. Uh, anybody can download it, uh, email it uh, with uh, supporting documentation to justify the request to our office. We will review it as expeditiously as possible and set, set up people with low income assistance uh, for the utility bills. We also offer payment plans for a variety of different circumstances for folks that may need to um, spread out their payment over a series of uh, a couple of months. Um, that, that truly is an exception if, if people are really having a hard time um, to make their payment. Um, but I have staff um, working with clients, um, with customers on a daily basis, um, really working with them to make sure that they stay in compliance um, with their utility bill. Thank you. Michael, anything from you have questions? I'm going to say uh, I, providing. Go ahead. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So yeah, I, I had the same question uh, that uh, Laura did about you know what what we can do uh, in terms of providing some relief. I know that we're. Um, you know, committed to not turning off utilities for customers who are late on payments and whatnot. And I'm assuming that that carries over to this. Um, so um, the only other question I, you know, I'm really curious about what's going to happen next year, seeing what's what's happening with the economy and uh, anticipating that that CPI could even potentially go negative. I, I don't think it's gone negative in any time recent, but uh, does that mean there'll be a, a cut in rates if it's only based on CPI? And I know that, that I think the next year is a detailed year and that there might be some other factors, but, um, and there's also going to be some savings, it seems like from the, the cuts in services that uh, Kirsten mentioned, um, the reduction in the bulky item pickup, the um, removal of the uh, hazardous uh, waste uh, drop-offs. And so, uh, can we anticipate any savings there that uh, we can uh, see next year? Um, if I can answer that, um, I did. We put we we modified the bulky item program, Council Member Salazar. Um, so we did not completely get rid of it, and we have made all those residents that requested one whole already. They're already scheduled for their bulkies in the next couple of weeks. Um, so we didn't eliminate any programs. We did the best we could to, to postpone them and they have been all made whole. So, and next year, um, is a CPI year as well. We have a detailed rate year every third year and last year was our detailed rate year. So next year we will see a CPI year. So it will be interesting to see what that looks like. All right. That's it for me. Thank you. Uh for, for myself, and I know, Marty, we'll go back to you uh, so you can ask the attorney. Um, if there was a postponement, and I know there's there's language, then what? let's say it's uh, three months, six months, whatever the uh, item is. What happens with that rate? Is, is it that it's going to be obligated to somebody, whether it's the rate payer or the city, but that somebody has to absorb that at this point? Or could you just arbitrarily say six months and... Before you answer that, just for people that are listening, um, it is a 25%, it's my, my knowledge, as far as reduction for water, sewer, uh, and 32-gallon tote for those in the in, in a status, uh, if they go online, as the finance director said. So it's not just for garbage. It's also for the water and sewer as well. But uh, uh, Kirsten? Um, I'm going to defer that question to Keith because I can't answer what that would look like. I don't okay. Know if you might be able to. Through the chair, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, it, um, I guess it really does depend on um, what would what would be discussed in a negotiation. Uh, the city has not um, entertained a, a postponement of a rate increase in prior years um, with this franchise agreement, and so it would really be up to what is negotiated between the city and Recology San Bruno. Okay, and then I I know it's one point six two. Uh, effective July 1st, and if we equate that per month, what does that come to uh, in, in money as far as the increase for the 32? Through the chair. So I believe the increase for the 32 was 51 cents, um, and that was that is a monthly fee, and residents get billed every other month. 
And so that would feel like a dollar and two cent increase on their utility bill for garbage service, I believe. And Kirsten, please correct me if I'm wrong. You are correct. You are correct. And then if somebody could qualify for the 20 gallon or wishes is doing a great job in the 20 gallon, I believe, and I'm just going to have memory, it's like a $7.10 or $7.11 difference between the 20 and a 32. Mr. Mayor, through the chair? Yes. Yes, that is correct. It's about a $7 reduction a month if you go from a 32 gallon toter to a 20 gallon toter. That's correct. Okay, thank you. And then, uh, I, uh, Marty, uh, well, let's go back to you because I know you had a question for the attorney. Yeah, just um, clarification, I, I or for the public to understand. So, Recology has the right to request this increase. If Correct. the council decides not to, not to, then there we will be uh, in trouble with the contract. Correct. That's correct. The uh, agreement requires the city council to approve the increase if it's reasonable and within the parameters of the agreement. But if the city council does not, Recology would be entitled to recover that money from, from the city. So if it's not imposed on the ratepayers, somebody has to pay it in the absence of a negotiation or a negotiated agreement. And the process to have that negotiation, are we required to deny it first? Or that could be made just by saying, let's talk. Uh, that that there, there is no process spelled out for that in the uh, contract. That would be up to the city council about how they would like to direct staff. Okay. Thank you. And, and in, in these, uh, city attorney, in, in these, if there were discussions or there were dialogues, does that mean there is an outside person or does that mean who's doing that or are we paying for well i know we're using staff time i get that and then are we using an outside person on regarding contract and then it opens the whole contract up is that correct well the negotiation could take a number of different forms uh, with a number of different individuals involved and it could be uh, involve an outside agency to help facilitate okay i, I well, I'm going to repeat back just because you kind of paused was that it could take a num number of ways and it could uh, have potentially. Okay. So um, is there any other uh, questions or comments from my colleagues? Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any. Uh, this is a wave the first reading and then there's the introduction of the ordinance. So is there any action on this item from council? Council? Most of you are muted. Um, sorry, I will unmute myself. So you're asking for a motion to approve? To waive, to to waive, waive, the, the, waive the first reading? Yes. I, I, no moved. Is there a second to waive the first reading? OK. I think for Rico, um, if I may, this, can you explain that like we did last time to people who are watching from for the public? Or, or Mark, would you mind explaining what that means for the public? Uh, as far as the waiving of the first reading? Yes, please. I can do that. I think that Mark is working um, with IT right now on the feedback issue. A waiving of the first reading is the first step to introduce an ordinance. Um, it is, it just means that you do not have to read the ordinance out in its entirety. It's allowing the council to make a, um, a, a motion on the ordinance without reading out the entire ordinance as it was written. But, but to, for clarification, it does not make the final approval or denial of the ordinance. Correct. Is that what Thank you want? You. Okay. I, I think I, I would kind of figured it out, but I just wanted to make sure we, we hit it all. So again, there was a, uh, I had from Davis a uh, motion to waive the first reading. Is there a second? 
Is there a second? So what happens if there's not, then we will be reading the entire uh, ordinance. Or we'll be uh, reading the entire ordinance. So in order to spare the audience from having to listen to the entire ordinance, I will second that motion. Okay, so we have a motion and seconded to waive the first reading. Um, uh, Melissa, if you could take roll. Yes, and I do want to clarify this is not to adopt this ordinance. I just want to clarify that for anybody listening. Um, Council Member Davis. Mr. Mayor. Aye. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, Marty. I just wanted to see if um, this is how this, excuse my inexperience because I haven't had to try to do this before, but could I introduce a separate um, can I make a, a separate motion or ask our council member Davis to amend her um, uh, motion? Mr. Mayor, if I may. Uh, City Attorney. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, there, we were having some additional technical difficulties and I didn't hear what led up to this. It, so it, they're, they're, we, are you we can hear you perfectly. Uh, Marty, why don't you read? Oh, I'm sorry. So oh. we were on the first reading it was explained what that uh, means so it doesn't have to be read its entirety it does not say that you're approving or denying the ordinance uh davis and salazar motion and second it uh council member medina is asking can he make an amendment uh to this did i hit, hit that right marty yeah i wanted to ask um to continue the, the discussion and 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 bring up uh, something a little different City Attorney so, uh, Zeperano, he wants to amend the motion to waive the first reading only, not to introduce the ordinance, just to clarify. Right. So uh, normally, uh, I'm not even sure under Robert's rules of order whether you can amend a motion to waive the first reading. Uh, what, what is it that you want to amend about that motion? Uh, so so I, I just so we all understand, currently we are just waiving um, the first reading. And what I would want to add, on, add in there is, is to ask staff to talk to Recology about what it would take to de uh, delay the increase. So, uh, Council Member Medina, that would be an appropriate amendment to request after there's a motion or, or, or in a motion to introduce the ordinance. Because remember, the introduction of the ordinance would occur at this meeting and the adoption would occur at a subsequent meeting. So the waiving the first reading is merely a procedural um, motion to not have to read the entire ordinance okay. off before it's introduced. Okay. So I would recommend deferring that until after the motion to waive the first reading is voted on. Thank you for that clarification. I learned something today. <laughs> okay, so we're back to the motion and second on waiving the first reading. And Melissa, can you call roll? Yes, Council Member Davis. Aye. Council Member Mason. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Vice Mayor Salazar. Aye. Mayor Medina. Aye. Motion carries to waive the first reading. Thank you. And now we have the um, introduction to the ordinance, and that's where I think, Marty, is what you were talking about. Yes, Mr. Mayor, if I may. So at this time, a council member uh, could make a motion to introduce the ordinance, um, either including or not including the request by council member medina um, if it does not include that request council member medina could uh, request an amendment to that and the motion maker can either choose to amend his or her motion um, or uh, the request for an amendment would be voted on separately and before the main motion does that make sense yes okay so right now, uh, if introducing the ordinance, and again, city attorney, this also comes back a second time, but for the second t reading, then that is to affirm the action of the ordinance and what this, uh, uh, council member Medina is asking, well, can we move this forward, but have staff look into possible negotiations to possibly uh, postpone, I guess. But then again, if the answer is no, it's no, but then that means negotiations of the contract and uh, theoretically, somebody's going to have could pay. For, the city may have to pay, or the ratepayer, or we may find it at a later time. Is that hopefully I didn't confuse it? No, Mr. Mayor. So the the city council could introduce the ordinance at this meeting, 
the city council could make a separate motion if they wished to direct staff to enter into negotiations uh, with Ecology. Those would not necessarily be mutually exclusive. Okay. Thank Mr. you. Mayor. Uh, yes, city manager. To the chair. Uh, Keith, can you pause? So, all right. Okay, we're good now. Um, yes, you're good. It seems that there may be a motion made to direct staff to negotiate. I just want to point out uh, that we would need to know uh, and have clear guidance from the city council. Um, as the city attorney said, the contract uh, states that they are due uh, this appropriate in increase that aligns to CPI. Uh, if the city embarks in negotiations with Recology to delay it, it would be nice to know, uh, does council want a several month delay uh, until potentially the end of COVID-19? Or does council want a four year delay? In any event, um, how would council like to direct staff to handle any amount of the increase that is not paid? Um, such should it be uh, added to the rate increase, the CPI next year, and also the rate increase that's not uh, received this year, would that have to be repaid and in what uh, time period? So n there's currently a request for a 1.62% increase. Let's say CPI next year is 1%. Will the increase next year be 2.62%? And then how would the increase for the 1.62% that was not collected this year uh, be handled? Uh, would that be added on to year two? So members would pay the 1.6 this year, CPI plus the back. Um, I think all of those are important. The other thing that I want to say, and I know rate increases are um, a challenge uh, for everyone. Um, as cost increase, having small rate increases uh, is oftentimes preferable than large rate increases. Uh, and so what's before you is uh, a rate increase um, at the 96 gallon total of just under $1.5 a, a month or one and a half dollars a month, but it ought the average customer has a 32 gallon toter, and that is a 51 cent increase per month. Thank, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, first of all, we can either try to introduce the ordinance or Marty, you heard the city, city manager. manager. Um, uh, so, so are you prepared for, because we would, as the manager said, we would need all those parameters uh, but I'm going to turn to the rest of my colleagues as far as they want to move forward on the introduction of the ordinance and then take up a separate uh, motion and see if that's considered. So uh, up to my colleagues. To the chair. Michael. Uh, Mike, I, I am definitely sensitive to the, the plight that a lot of our residents are in. And I understand how the optics on this is, is pretty bad that we would push through a rate increase uh, during during the pandemic, while so many people are out of work, um, but of all of the increases that are going to come across our desks and all of the um, expenses that we're going to incur, um, this is probably going to be the most modest of all of them. And given the late hour um, of this negotiation and being the, the lack of control we really have over the mechanism, being that there's a third party involved here, so this is not just us deferring a collection on revenue that's due us. There's also that payment that needs to happen out to um, a, a private entity. And so, uh, as uh, the city manager pointed out, there are a number of par parameters that would have to be decided. Um, and it just seems that, you know, trying to figure all that out and negotiate all that or build that into, um, you know, the ordinance that we're going to introduce tonight seems um, precarious. And and beyond that, uh, this also means that staff is then going to have to dedicate time um, to this effort, this negotiation effort, uh, completely out of the norm of the normal um, negotiation that happens around garbage contracts. And during a time when resources are already stretched. I, I just don't see that uh, being as a, I, I don't see that being a, a good course for us to take. 
So um, I, I'm going to recommend that we move forward on the ordinance the way it's currently structured, and uh, I, you know, with um, you know, with the understanding that it will, it does have an impact on people, but um, we we do have to move forward on this action. So, Mr. Mayor. Yes, please, Marty. I think our city manager is, is right. I think, I think Michael has, has a good point. With the long standing relationship that we have with Recology, that they are a valued service provider, no doubt. The intent is to ask for a delay at this time of unprecedented time. And it, and it is minor, it is $6 a year for the 32 gallon toter. Correct. Um, so that's not gonna kill anybody. The company, if they could just say, yeah, you know what, let's, let's not make it a big blown negotiation because it isn't. I would think that, okay, tell you what, starting in the year, <clears throat> You will get your rate increase, if and you could go ahead and, and add it on, um, at that time, and th th they can make it up, the amount of money they missed out on, for next year. That that's that's all I'm thinking of. Just being sensitive to it. It is so minor, and it's almost like I see Michael's point. I I, I get it. Like. It's six dollars in a year, but because it's so small, then it's like, well, then go ahead and delay it. It's not going to break the company. You're, everybody's going to get whole at some point, and it, if it can't be figured out in an hour, then then okay, we know it can't be figured out. I'm not asking for for a huge negotiation, and, and I'm just hoping that it, it, it could be something that could be accommodated. interested in hearing what everybody else thinks. I know it, it's, it's um, you know, everybody, um, I just wanna hear what everybody else thinks. I, I, I think that it, it, should, it should go across pretty quickly and it doesn't need to open up all kinds of other things. It, it could be a, I'm hoping, something simple that two long time partners could figure out. Any co uh, comments from uh, the other colleagues? Any comments from uh, manager or attorney or uh, on this or the finance? You know, uh, okay, somebody unclicked. Um, Linda? Linda, did you want to talk? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're on. I, yeah, I think, um, I, I just think it, this, I believe this started um, at the onset of COVID-19. I don't, I can't remember if it had already, if the shelter in place order had come out or not. Um, but as I stated before, I, I think I have some concerns around just the fact that this contract has been around for so long, but that's something that Recology is, you know, we're not going to resolve that today. Um, but I think this idea of just the increase, it, it's, the fact that we're increasing other rates too as the city, we, we just increased our cable uh, not that long ago and it was uh, more significant. Um, and so I just think that at this time to move forward um, with an increase from ecology when the conversation hasn't been had, um, I, I don't think it's productive. I think it's worth it to ask ecology. I agree that ecology has been a, a good partner um, we've been really happy with their services here, um, but I do think that, that conversation is merited. Um, I think it's worth it to at least ask and to, to come back with results from that conversation. Okay, and, and from my understanding uh, as well, it's not as if it's going to go away. So it's got to be paid at some point by someone, whether it's the city uh, doing that, which obviously we know our current budget status. Um, it's uh, do you you know would do you put it on next year which i know councils have been when you started looking at the history it gets gets criticized for saying well that's great that you gave us a zero this year but then you just doubled it next year 
So now I'm feeling it even worse than if it was graduate. Um, and that goes back to before I was even on that sometimes water sewer in 2000, for example, I can tell you looking at the graph, there was no increase. Well, did that help three years from there? No, it, it, it elevated and escalated it to where it's like, oh, wow, it is sticker shock. Um, the, and I appreciate what Marty's saying about the conversation in this. And, and you're right, Marty, it is $6 uh, a year. Timing isn't good for anything for anyone at any time. Uh, I think even if it's not COVID-19, it's not a good time. Uh, it's not that everybody, you know, we're a working class community here. But uh, this is, I believe, one of the lowest uh, uh, colas since 08, 09 is my, my, my memory. Um, it is 51 cents a month. And I'm thinking for the staff time that would it take to utilize and still have that discussion, which is not, it's going to do one of two things. The city's going to pay, it's going to get postponed to the rate payers next year. But in essence, it's just a, it's a, a you know matter of time. And if God willing, we're out of this to where people are back to work, I hope uh, in three months, you know, we're talking a dollar and 50 cents more or less. Um, so anyway, th that's my food for thought. So unless uh, Councilman Davis, unless you have anything to add, I'll see if there's any action from council on the, on the ordinance. Well, I mean, this came to council, um, seems like a couple months ago now. And, and we, as a United council agreed to move forward with this and realize that this is part of the annual review and it is only 51 cents a month. Um, I was, I was looking at earlier in the week, I was looking at, uh, a few of the surrounding cities. So in South San Francisco, they're paying $2 and seven cents more, uh, for the 32 gallon. If we approve these rates, um, Millbrae, they're paying $3 and 92 cents more for the 32. If we approve these rates, um, and in Brisbane, it's, um, $2 more if we approve these rates and those rates for those cities are only through June of 2020. So those rates will even go up further. Um, I, I agree with uh, Council Member Salazar and the, the fact that, you know, you don't increase a little bit today. Down the road, you're increasing higher and higher and people can't afford that. So um, I realize the unprecedented times, um, but it, I just don't I think in the bigger scheme of things, I'd rather work with their customer to pay their bill in three months and give them those extensions and give them payment arrangements, get them on a low income uh, rate assistance program, get them on a grant program. But this increase is not the, the, the solution to many residents out there who are struggling today. This is just not the issue. I think there are other things we need to look, at, look into. What we can do as a community to support those who are struggling, provide them meals, provide them assistance in utility bills, um, to pay an entire bill. You know, I'd be willing to get involved in a program where we can reach out to residents who are really suffering and, and provide them some support in their bills um, through donations. But I, I think that the 51 cents a month isn't um, a make or break for um, anybody who's struggling. Okay. So um, I appreciate unless there's any other uh, feedback uh, than we have an ordinance. Uh, so we would need a motion and a second if council wishes to proceed uh, on the ordinance. Through the chair, I, I just want to say that I, I support what uh, uh, council member Medina said about just making a request to ecology. So not directing staff to renegotiate anything, but uh, putting it out there and if, if ecology could find a way to uh, retract their requests unilaterally. I, I would definitely support uh, that uh, that comment coming from council. But um, as far as the uh, the ordinance, I I don't think we should be amending that at this point. And I will make a motion uh, to introduce that ordinance for approval. Is there a second? I'll second and ditto those comments as well. Um, and I will uh, ditto those as well. Um, okay, we have a motion and a second to introduce the ordinance. Uh, Melissa, please. City Clerk. Councilmember Davis. Aye. Councilmember Mason. 
Um, I just want I just want to say I didn't I did not approve this and when it came to us about a month or two months ago. I don't recall it being unanimous, um, and I do not. Approve, I will vote no tonight as well. Thank you, Councilmember Medina. I have to vote no on this. I think it's it's something that we 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 could have talked about a little bit and, and for all the good reasons and Laura you made a lot of great points we could do all that you that you're saying and we are and we could do this one thing too so I, I I'm gonna I'm voting no the way the way this is proposed I, I believe that we we have a path forward councilman I'm sorry uh, vice mayor Salazar I'm gonna vote aye and uh, I, I also want to add that um, you know, I, I understand the the emotion around this and the um, you know the comments that uh, Councilmember Medina made. But uh, e even I mean, it, it, the gesture is one thing, but as, as the city manager pointed out, there's there's no substance or direction that we could provide tonight that would provide a path around this. Um, we can say we don't want to do it, but as you pointed out yourself. Um, somebody's going to have to pay the bill. And I, I didn't hear anything that was discussed that said, here is, uh, here is the plan B. And so um, I understand what you're saying, and, and I wholeheartedly support where you're coming from, but I just I don't see how we could have made that work. Let me make it a little clearer then, that we would pro postpone the rate increase until the beginning of the year. The payment of the of all the money would come from the from the ratepayer it wouldn't come from the city and it would be added on to the to the bill for um they could rearrange it's a 1.63 prorated over 12 months but it could be um conducted in in the, the six months right from 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 january to um june july is that right july into june into june through june right so you pay in june so so it could be i would think it'd be something that simple that that the city can't pay for it we 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 have serious issues with our budget recology is entitled to the increase do they need to get it now or could they wait a little bit is 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 what i'm proposing and then the ratepayer will pay for it. And yes, it's it's very little, but it's still it just seems so wrong. And so this is a way for just a just a time out and, and people are gonna get back to work. The and if and if it doesn't then we're gonna be in a way more trouble than than, than where we're at now. And, it, and it's it's asking a good partner that if they're willing to work with us to show that you can you can you can bend a little. Well, and my, do I mean, Martin, let me finish. Let me finish, yeah. Mayor. I'll, I'll, I'm going to sum, sum, sum it up. Peninsula Clean Energy gave a hundred dollars to the to those that were having the most difficulty paying their bills. That's a hundred bucks, right? So what we're ask, what I'm asking for is just a pause, acknowledge it, and, and then it'll, it'll be made whole. And this is a one, once in a, hopefully, once in a lifetime pandemic for all of us. Okay, we and need yes, to- it's not much, but go ahead, go ahead. Oh, it's just because we're in the middle of motion and I've let it go probably, I, I should have been scolded by now. Um, but, but I didn't want to interrupt and scold you. <laughs> probably should have so the, the other thing too is uh and so mr salazar you voted i is am i correct I, so, I voted in the affirmative yes yes and uh uh i'm going to say marty i think everybody echoed and dittoed uh, at least three and yourself is four that said hey it doesn't hurt to ask and i think that's what we're also saying as well so um uh go ahead melissa you can ask for my vote mayor medina aye so motion carries three to two with council members Mason and Medina opposed. Okay. And so also though, going back to um, what uh, council member Medina 
had said, and I think uh, Laura and Michael and I were saying, does it hurt staff to sit and talk before it comes back for the final reading? No, it doesn't. And have a conversation. So um, I think that's something you also pointed out, Marty, which I'm sure they can do that as well. Thank Is, you. Okay. I just want to make sure I wasn't misinterpreting. No, no, no. It's, it's good. I, it's fine. Okay. Well, so... I, I know I, that doesn't help the city manager because you're saying you're going to talk talk about what, and I've asked you for all these parameters. So what are you asking? I think in essence what I've heard. Um, okay, yeah, maybe I'm misspeaking. Go ahead, city manager. No, or am I? I, I think we're I think we're good. I think what we heard uh, is that um, the motion to move forward uh, was adopted, but uh, before it comes back for final action, uh, we. Uh, staff should sit down with Recology and discuss a potential delay um, approximately beginning halfway through the year, which would mean uh, for the 32 gallon toter, the monthly increase for the last six months of the year instead of 51 cents per month would be approximately a dollar and two cents per month. Okay. And, and I think it also is, you know, whether it's promoting also the uh, the water, sewer, and garbage for those that need assistance. It's also for uh, seeing if we can convert 32 gallon to 20 gallon to save the $7 and 10 cent. Um, so there are other things too that I know Recology already does do, but I think also here within our, if we do get a, a phone call from folks who are finding it even more challenging for the water sewer bill, but, you know, put garbage aside uh, that staff in finance, I know, does a great job of giving them those opportunities and options. Um, so, OK, uh, anything else, council or are we Marty, does that pretty summarize what, what they're going to go back and just ask? That's yeah. what our city manager said. So I think yeah. that yeah. it's kind of what I asked for, but it kind of switched around a little bit. So but I'm so happy with it. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah. And we'll be able to vote on it again. So, and, I think and, that's maybe, and I'd be happy to vote for it. I think I think it'd be great that we could okay. work something out. All right. Thank you, Marty. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, Mayor Medina, yep. if when staff is done, we can find out why it's uh it's needed now to make these increases when apparently San Mateo and Hillsboro are paying less. Um, it'd be great to to just hear that and why we have this need in San Bruno right now to raise these rates. Thank you. Okay, and I do know, uh, I got a call today, and I know in Daly City I'm hearing it went up 10 or 11 percent, uh, their um, garbage. They have a different, they don't have scavenger, they don't have recology. I think it's Republic, I, or, and don't hold me to that, but I was surprised at that increase. Um,